Hi everyone. In this talk, I will be presenting the limitations of stochastic selection with pairwise independent priors. This is a joint work with Shadin Dugmi and Neil Patel. We start by a well-known stochastic selection problem called profit inequality. Consider a hypothetical scenario, an auto shop which can choose whether or not to serve a customer based on how much they are willing to pay and the kind of auto service they want. Let's start simple first. Imagine the shop only offers car washes and can perform at most one wash per day since their washes are very thorough. Every day and customers come. Autoshop has prior stochastic information about these customers, a value distribution d sub c for each customer. Their true valuation will be revealed once the customers stop by. The goal is to maximize the total revenue by selecting one customer. An algorithm takes the prior information and order as input. It encounters customers' true valuation during the day. Let's say $15 first, and maybe it skips this and then $20 for the second and okay it looks like a good offer and algorithm accept it and for the rest there is no way to accept any offer however we can learn the valuations 12 24 and algorithm generated $20 of revenue if we were a profit who knows the future we may select the best offer which is $24 the main question of profit inequality is that whether do we design an algorithm which competes with profit now, let's generalize this and assume that the auto shop offers other services like battery replacement, oil change, tire rotation, etc. Still, end customers appear every day. Auto shop knows which type of service they want to get and their value distribution a priori. Now, a subset of customers' requests are feasible. A well known extension fitting into this model is the metric profit inequality. In the metric profit inequality, these feasible subsets are independent sets of a metroid. I will omit giving formal definition of metroid, however, in simple terms, a metroid is a downward closed set system with exchange property. Consider the figure and assume that the feasible sets of services are indicated in curly boxes inside. Let us learn true values one by one. First one is $15, algorithm skip, and the next one is $20, algorithm selects that offer. And the next one is 12, algorithm accepts that offer too. And the last one is 24, algorithm cannot accept because it's not no more feasible anymore. Alright, again if you were a prophet who knows the future, then we might generate $36, but algorithm generated $32. Question is still valid, whether can we design an algorithm to compete with profit. We start discussing our results by raising the following question. When do we compete with profit? In particular, we will be interested in assumptions on distributions. We are not going to make any assumption on individual distributions, but we will discuss what happens for different types of correlations across these distributions. Let's briefly review prior works. This problem is initially studied for independent distribution assumption. There, a well-known result of Kleinberg and Weinberg shows that there exists half competitive profit inequality. However, for arbitrary correlations, on the other extreme, there is no hope to achieve any approximation even for the classical setting. In a recent result, Karagiannis, Gravin, Lu and Bank investigated a correlation model in between these two extremes, which is pairwise independence. A collection of distributions are called pairwise independent if every pair is independent, but more than two distributions might involve some correlations. In that setting, they showed uh, for classical problem, there exists a one-third competitive profit inequality when prior distributions are pairwise independent. Okay, in our work, we study metric profit inequality with pairwise independent priors. Our initial question was to ask whether can we achieve constant competitive profit inequalities beyond single choice. And the answer is yes. If the metroid is partition type, which means it can be approximated by a random partition metroid, then there is a constant competitive pairwise independent metroid profit inequality. However, this does not extend to all metroids. For general metroids, we show the best possible approximation ratio is order of 1 over low rank. In addition to the profit inequality, 
we studied contention resolution subject to metroid constraint again with pairwise independent priors. Contention resolution is a related model which is important in these kind of stochastic selection problems. However, in this talk, I'm not going to get into details of it. We discovered results similar to profit inequality. Partition type metroids admits constant balance contention resolution, but general metroids admits only order of one over rank balance contention resolution when, uh, pro when we have pairwise independent priors. To construct these hard pairwise independent examples, we developed a tool. We showed that random linear functions transforms linear independence to stochastic independence. This will serve as a critical subroutine of our constructions for both profit inequality and contention resolution. Some special cases of this tool is previously discovered in de-randomization theory, but we never seen a statement at this level of generality. As we have limited time, in this talk we will discuss pairwise independent profit inequality with general metroid constraints. Next, we move to construction of hard example and start by building some intuition what could go wrong for an algorithm. We first construct an hard example without considering pairwise independence. Go back to our Autoshop example. Assume that there are eight different types of services and each can be served at most once per day. We will construct levels in a way that uh, lower level customers are willing to pay lower values and higher level customers are willing to pay higher values. An algorithm is going to see these customers starting from level 1 and to up. Let's say algorithm says that we have one customers for each service type willing to pay $1 in the level 1. An algorithm needs to select some of them to serve. Let's say these are served. In the level 2, for the uniformly random half of these services, a new customer appears to and they are willing to pay $2 for all other customers are willing to pay zero dollars now we can basically forget about zero dollar customers we are never going to serve them but we may we, we may want to serve for two dollar customers and algorithm let's say select this guy in the next level again for the uniformly random half of the services that has a customer non-zero value customer in level two a level 3 customer will appear and willing to pay $4. At each level, number of uh, customers willing to pay non-zero value shrinks by half and the, the value they want to pay doubles. An algorithm selects again and then we go to the last level. Algorithm could be able to generate $10 in total. If we were a prophet who knows the future, we might select from top. Get the $8, 4, 2, twos, and 4, 4, 4, 1 and generate $20. Now, I'll profit, notice that profit can generate half of the total valuations of every level because half of the services are going to be available even if you select all the, even if you cover and block all the services that appears above you, above any level. Okay, let's make this example larger and state properties of construction. Assume that we have 2 to the k many services and k levels of customers are coming. Here is the properties of our construction. First, we have nested levels. And next, we realize that every level equally contributes to the optimal solution because half of the services or service requests are available to profit for at each level. And therefore, profit could be able to generate 2 to the k minus 1 revenue for each level and therefore k times 2 to k minus 1 revenue in total. However, an algorithm needs to see these levels in increasing value order and the error of algorithm propagates through the levels which means if algorithm selects c fraction of the services to serve, the customers to serve at level 1 then c fraction of all the levels above are going to be blocked and Therefore, algorithm can be competitive to uh, profit for at most constant many levels. Therefore, total revenue of the algorithm is bounded by a constant multiple of 2 to the k. 
Therefore, any algorithm is at most C over K competitive, which is order of one over log rank competitive for this example. All right, we come up with a hard instance, but the question is how can we make it pairwise independent? Let me remind you a fact. For partition type metroids, pairwise independent profit inequality is easy. So therefore, there is no way to convert this example to, extend this example to pairwise independent distribution. But it was a nice try. Now we are moving to the scenario where we can also implement pairwise independence, which is linear metroid. A linear metroid consists of a set of vectors, and subsets of these vectors are feasible if they are linearly independent. In particular, in this construction, we are using finite field of dimension d. Now we are going to re-implement our hard example in terms of linear metroid which satisfy all the properties that we discovered so far. First, we are going to satisfy this nested level relation. We are going to form some linear subspaces. Let's say subspace L1 spans everywhere. And we are going to sample randomly a linearly independent vectors within this subspace. Let's call them sigma vectors and assign them the value of 2 to the power of 1. In the level 2, we are going to randomly sample a subspace level 2, which spans uniformly randomly half of the vectors sampled for level 1. And again, we sample a linearly independent set of vectors within the subspace L2 and assign them to the value of 2 to the power of 2. And in the third level, we sample a subspace again, and uniformly random half of the vectors sampled for level 2 are going to be spent by level 3, and one quarter of uh, vectors sampled for level 1 are going to be spent, also spent by level 3. And we sample linearly independent vectors within the subspace and assign them to the value of 2 to the power of 3. At each level, the values doubles and the dimension of the subspace shrinks by half. And it goes like this. We have nested levels. Notice that in this construction, the every level equally contributes to optimal because half of their elements are never going to be spent by higher level elements. They are going to be available always and they are the most profitable ones. We can select them. And if an algorithm sees these levels starting from lower level to the higher level, then the errors made by the algorithm is going to propagate through the levels. In particular, if an algorithm selects a vector from level one, which is also in the span of level 2, then you, we cannot generate all the revenue of level 2 anymore. Okay, alright, we implemented hard example in linear metrics, but the question is still there, how can we make it pairwise independent? For this purpose, we developed a tool and show that random linear maps convert linear independence to stochastic independence and pairwise linear independence to pairwise stochastic independence. And here how we implement it. Let's say these sigma ve vectors forms the columns of sigma matrix. In addition to all the properties, we also ensure that sigma matrix has pairwise linearly independent columns. In our paper, we showed that this can be satisfied. And for a uniform random matrix R, if we multiply r and sigma we obtain x we basically apply a linear transformation now the columns of x becomes pairwise stochastically independent in other words we are com we are transforming these sigma vectors to x vectors and uh, since r is a linear transformation we preserve all nested subspace relations and therefore x vectors satisfies all the properties that we discussed and they are pairwise stochastically independent. Finally, we state our main result is a theorem. There is no way to achieve uh, strictly better than one over log rank competitive pairwise independent profit inequality for linear metroids. Okay, until so far, I skipped one technical detail. Let me summarize our construction and mention that detail there. Here is the blueprint of our construction. First, we construct a hard example with which features arbitrary correlation. Second, 
we implement properties that make the problem hard in terms of linear method. Third, we apply random linear maps to obtain almost pairwise independent distribution. Let me tell you why I'm saying almost pairwise independent. Notice that in our transformation, the random linear transformation, R is a uniformly random matrix and there is a chance that R might be a non-invertible. In that scenario, for two different vectors, sigma1 and sigma2, might coincide after transformation. And which means X might be assigned to two different levels after transformation, which makes it like invalid example. However, we realize that this is a rare event. And we fix this problem by constructing labeled copies of every vectors and we assign weights to these labeled copies. And finally, we uh, even, even after that, we realize that there is some small correlations across these items and we subsample uh, to make the distribution pairwise independent. Cool. Let me conclude the talk and state some open questions. First, we study two problems and have two results. Uh, for profit inequalities, we show that general metroids admits one of our log rank compared to pairwise independent profit inequality, but partition type metroids admits constant competitive algorithm. And for the contention resolution, we show that general metroids again admits only one over rank, order of one over rank balanced content, pairwise independent contention resolutions, uh, but partition type metroids admits constant balance uh, pairwise independent contention resolutions. The key takeaway from these results is the following. Stochastic selection with pairwise independent priors shows clear separation between partition type metroids and general metroids. Okay. And to construct these hard examples for general metroids, we developed a tool uh, that is random linear transformation, which transforms linear independence to stochastic independence. And finally, I I raise the following open question for which correlation model stochastic selection is hard or what can we say about k-wise independence thank you for listening here are the references that I touched during the talk